On today's episode of Locked On 76ers, Keith and I talk about the player that we believe may surprise us the most. We'll dive into it all, let you know who we each have chosen, and get your feedback, of course, in the comments. That's next right here, Locked On 76ers. You are Locked On 76ers, your daily Philadelphia 76ers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, you are locked on 76ers. I'm Devon Givens from 97.5 The Fanatic Radio in Philadelphia, alongside my co-host and partner, as always, from the Enquirer.com. Sixers beat writer Keith Pompey. Keith, what's happening? What's poppin', D? How you doing, bro? Oh, pretty good, man. Pretty good. Looking forward to this one, getting ready to talk about uh, some of the folks we feel like will be a bit of a surprise uh, for this upcoming season. And before we get started, we got to thank everybody for making Locked On 76ers your first listen every day. And remember, Locked On 76ers is free and available on all platforms, including right here on YouTube, Locked On 76ers. So as we get closer and closer to the start of season and training camp in general, now, uh, what, 13 days away from media day and we get started there before you all head to South Carolina for training camp. Uh, Keith wanted to talk about some of the uh, more surprising things uh, for the season uh, you'll give one in, in this segment. I'll give mine in the second segment. We can kind of dissect that player and how important they may be and, and the surprise uh, as we get ready for the start of the 22-23 campaign. So why don't you get started with, with yours and, and we'll break it down. You know, I mean, I, I think the surprising player that um, for the Sixers this season is going to be Shake Milton. I mean, I honestly believe it's going to be Shake. You know, Shake's a guy who appeared in uh, – 55 games last year. He averaged 8.2 points. He averaged 2.5 assists. He shot like, you know, below his average at 32.3% from three. And see, the reason why I'm saying that this uh, fourth year guard who's averages 9.7 points is going to basically have a, a solid season is that when you look at last year, he started off in the beginning, it was marred by injury, right? He was in, started off injured. You know, he never really found his groove. They didn't have – he had to play a, a, uh, a different position. And what I mean by that, he was sort of like the backup point guard where we all know he's more of a scoring guard, right? So what happens is uh, he wasn't really comfortable. But it seems that after James Harden came and once the playoffs started, you know, Shake was – when he got in, he was more of himself to the point where – he was their best player in game six. He was the guy. And when I look at his progression, I'm talking about his first season, he averaged 4.4 points. The next season, he averaged 9.4 points. And then his third season, he was at 13. And then he had that drop off last year. But I think that had a lot to do with his role. It also had a lot to do with the injuries. And I think that he's the guy that's yeah. really going to surprise people. Because when you look at it, it was one of those things where, you know, in my opinion, you know, we all forgot about it. like shake is no longer people don't even talk about him anymore. But I feel like with a health coming in healthy and, and doing what he has to do, that he'll, you know, have a pretty good year. That is a surprising one, to be perfectly honest with you, because of uh, what's in front of him uh, with now. Obviously, James Harden and Tyrese Maxey, but then you also look at uh, what's there with um, now DeAnthony Melton, you know, someone like DeAnthony Melton, who is also in the mix, who was brought in for a particular reason, and that is to be a, 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 a defensive stopper, of course, but also an improved offensive player. Uh, so Shake Milton, I, I think he has a, a bit of an uphill climb here. Not to say that he won't be on a roster because I do think he'll make the team, it's, and they picked up his option. A player option, but it was just more of, again, having to play through some of those others and trying to get there when I, I just wasn't really sure if, if he would be able to do that, to be to be completely honest with you about Shake Milton. The talent is there. Uh, last year, he had to deal with that back injury that kept him out for so long, and we've seen him explode for 39 points in the game and think that we might be getting a little bit more from him. It hasn't really necessarily translated uh, for him with this basketball team. And you're right, playing off the ball a little bit, 
James Harden, Tyrese Maxey, different type of role for Shake Milton. So a surprise as your choice, that's definitely a surprise for me. Well, I'm just going to add this. And the thing about it is, you know, we look at it. Yes. I mean, he's going to have to battle. But let's 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 be 100. When we look at the guys that they got, you know, most of them are three and D type of guys, three and D. The only two guys who can get their own shot are in, in, you know, is is uh, Maxi and, and James Harden. Right. So you're going to need somebody to come in. And like they say, horses for courses. Brett Brown used to say that you're going to need somebody who's going to be able to come off the bench and get buckets at times. And right now they just don't have that. What, what they have is they have a lot of lockdown defenders who can hit threes, corner threes. That's what they're known for. But I think that, you know, it's not going to be one of those things where, okay, Shake, you you know, you're just going to start out and you're going to be that guy. No, you got to prove it. But I feel like he's going to be determined and he's going to play to where he's going to get in and he's just going to get buckets. He's going to play free. It ain't going to be, okay, Shake, you want to come in and pass the ball. Nah, it's like, Boom, 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 going to the rim. So that's what I think, that he has something that the others don't have. Okay. I mean, and we've talked about a guy like Jordan Clarkson, and I'm not saying he's Jordan Clarkson, but he is somebody that can come off the bench and score a little bit for this basketball team. So good one. On the other side in the next segment, Keith, I'll tell you mine. And uh, we already mentioned him, but we'll get into it a little bit more right here next, Locked On 76ers. Yeah, we, I want to hear who your guy is. I really do. I really want to hear who D's guy is. But right now, let's talk about Bet Online. Bet Online is your number one source for all your pro and college football betting needs and sports information this season. Find all of the latest football league developments, game matchup, news, and podcasts, including this year's opening week game. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. The fastest and easiest way to check on all your favorite sports and events, including MLB, MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to the website today and use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and actions. I'm telling you, do it today, people. Definitely do it today. And folks, Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, LeBron James, Giannis and Denacumpo, which NBA player moves the betting line the most this season? Locked on and the great folks at the Bet Online Odds Makers present the NBA top 50 most valuable players starting on September 9th. Find it on Locked On NBA wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Welcome back to Locked On 76ers. Thank you for making Locked On 76ers your first listen. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Now podcast for nightly recaps of every NBA game with analysis from our local experts, free and available wherever you get your podcast. So, Keith, uh, I mentioned that uh, my choice we already mentioned, and that would be DeAnthony Melton. I think that people were, when the deal went down on draft night, Danny Green to Memphis in exchange for DeAnthony Melton and the draft pick uh, that the Sixers had in the later part of the round, people were like, okay, you know, it's like, all right, decent move, maybe, we don't know. But is that it? And at the, before the start of free agency, he's just a name. And you're just bringing in someone and you're moving on from Danny Green. You don't get a young player in the draft. What is DeAnthony Melton? Well, I, I, I don't know how much Sixer fans, let's just say at least the casual Sixer fans who may not know quite a bit about DeAnthony Melton, a guy with a really good wingspan, stands about 6'3", 6'4", 6'2", 6'3", and uh, is a really dogged defender can score the basketball. As you talk about Milton and his improvement, Melton has done the exact same thing all the way up to 10 points this past season, improving on his outside shooting. He's a threat now from, from the perimeter. As a guy who wasn't really known for that, he's known more for attacking the basket and getting to the basket uh, for DeAnthony Melton. And for those who don't know, I choose him just because I think as a surprise, he will be that because many people haven't really seen him. They've seen Memphis, but you haven't really paid attention to him. You, you pay attention to Morant and Jackson Jr. or Desmond Bain, some of these other names that they have on the team. And Melton just went about his business and, and just played his role and played his part. And that's what he's going to come in here and, and, and do for this basketball team as the primary backup, as the one who will be able to 
uh, play off the ball at times and allow for Tyrese Maxey or James Harden to play the way that they need to and to be that defensive presence that neither one of them have that reputation in the league so far. James Harden for all the years that he's been in and Tyrese Maxey for his early part of his career. That's why I think he's going to be important. He's going to be able to have allow them to have some versatility. And then the other part where I think, again, is surprised, the defense, which he is known for, being able to have certain lineups out there in, in certain situations for Doc Rivers to choose to go with these defensive lineups of Melton, Thibel, Tucker, House, and Embiid. A lot of ways they can go. And I'm very, very curious to see how it goes about. And I'm curious about your thoughts on, on my selection and De'Anthony Melton. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I'm with you on him. I, I do feel like he's going to have like a good, a good season. I mean, I do. I mean, you look at the toughness, you look at uh, defensive, um, defensively. And and I feel like, you know, yes, for the people in Philadelphia, the surprise is that a lot of them don't know a, a lot about him. You, you know what I mean? Like, they don't know a lot about him. So that that's going to be the thing. Like, you know, believe it or not, like, you know about P.J. Tucker. You you, you know about Montrez Harrell. You know, you, you, you know stuff about Daniel House, right? But this is the young guy who comes in and, you know, is a backup that you really don't know too much about just because he played for Memphis. Right. But yeah, I do agree with you that he will do that. But, um, you know, and, and, you know, I'm not going to be surprised with what he does because, you know, I feel like that's the reason why they went and got him. And I look at him as somebody that's going to be one of the first players off the bench, you know, so, you know, but that's a great selection. I just went with my man shape because, people are basically counting them out right now. It definitely seems like he is being counted out. And let's see what Shake Milton can do with, with an opportunity. Training camp, another situation where he has to fight for his. Let's see if he can, in fact, do that. All right, final segment on the other side. When we get back, we'll talk about the team in totality a little bit, you know, just in terms of surprise. And Keith, uh, with them being there, I, I want to, when you say surprise, I want to ask you a surprise team in the Eastern Conference that might pop up on people since we just talked about the surprise for the Sixers. Players individually we will get that in the final segment here. Locked on 76ers. Welcome back to Locked on 76ers. Keith Pompey, Devon Givens here with you. Keith, I sprung this one on you. Yeah, a, you surprise, sure <laughs> a surprise team in the Eastern Conference. What do you got? You know, it's weird. I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, is it, is it, you know, the easy pick for everybody to say is going to be uh, Cleveland, right? But I don't know if they're a surprise pick right now just because they went out there and, and, and picked up Donovan Mitchell. So to me, I think that there's two other teams that I look at, and, and one of them is Toronto, and the second team is the Atlanta Hawks. I think I'm going to go with Atlanta. And the reason why is because I like the guard tandem that they have. You know, um, I, I think that uh, Ice Trey, Trey Young, you know, he's an all-star. He's one of the leading leading scorers. Um, you, you look at, uh, what do they call him, baby boy, DeJounte Murray, you know, who they just picked up in the trade. Um, I, I think that that's going to be good because when you look at the Atlanta Hawks, you know, you have DeJounte, DeJounte Murray who's going to handle the ball you know, too, I think that what that does is Trey, I'm not calling him Allen Iverson, but what I'm saying is he's that type of guy that you can set screens for. You can do a lot of other things when DeJounte has the ball that's going to free him up and get him open. And he's going to become a headache for, for people. So when I look at that roster and you look at the young core of players that they have, um, and I think last year they might have been they, – they still had some injuries, right? Mm -hmm. But I also think that last year was – they was, like, reading the press, press clippings from what they had the season before going to the Eastern Conference Finals and believed too much stuff that I, I think that it kind of humbled them a little bit and they realized what they needed. So I think that the Atlanta Hawks are going to be my quote-unquote surprise team in the East. I actually like that one, and um, I, I I was actually going to go with you on that one. So it makes sense that we go with that. Uh, yeah, you're right, just to 
uh, be able to have the versatility there, help out Trey Young. It's going to be pretty good, pretty pretty nice work for them to be able to get that stuff done with him there and uh, keeping Collins and Capella together and uh, hopefully a healthy DeAndre Hunter. I think that team is going to be pretty good. I agree with you, Keith. What? We agree on something? We agree on something. <laughs> we agree on something. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, listen, man, we agree that this was a good podcast. So uh, uh, we thank everybody for making Locked On 76 as your first listen every day. Now, make your second listen Locked On NBA with Locked On experts covering the biggest stories around the league every Monday through Friday in less than 30 minutes, free and available wherever you get your podcast. Keep let the folks know. Well, they can find us, please. Well, first of all, like wherever you get your podcast, you can get this Locked On 76ers podcast, right? I'm Just subscribe to it, right? Just do that. And then secondly, what you need to do is you need to subscribe on our Locked On 76ers YouTube podcast, right? So you can see my man D with the fly hats and all this and, you know, his his swag and what would they call it? Um uh oh uh, his uh not not gear his uh his uh tag his drip his drip whatever <laughs> so right so do, that. so do that but what you do is when you do it go to the go to the uh the website and you see that liberty bell click on the liberty bell and you become a subscriber but you can also follow my man d at the divine giving show on 97.5 fm radio right so go there listen to my man he got his own show the divine giving show so you can also that is just, typically it's from six to ten on in the evening sometimes it is just a, but typically you go from six to ten in the evenings monday through friday but you can also follow my man at at divine g 975 on twitter you can follow me on twitter at pompey on sixers you can also read me in, in the philadelphia inquirer inquire.com all right. Listen, man, thanks for that. Appreciate all the shout out. And uh, we'll catch up, what, Thursday? We're taking Wednesday off. We'll get back yeah. to you on Thursday. You yeah. got it, man. Well, enjoy your Wednesday. Everybody enjoy your rest of your Tuesday. And we'll talk to you on Thursday. Peace.